Hey there! In this video, I am going to teach you how to make five next level charts in Microsoft Excel. Now these charts are not only fancy, but they are effective as well. After all, when it comes to data visualization, the main thing is that you communicate the data effectively. So if you're ready to learn how to build five charts that will impress just about anyone, then let's get started. For the first chart, we have some sales agents along with their sales targets and actual sales numbers. The goal is to create a chart that compares and emphasizes their sales performance, but also shows their performance in relation to their targets. So we will create a chart that looks like this. The bars represent the sales performance for each agent, making it easy to compare everyone's performance. And the dark blue lines over each bar represent the sales targets for each agent so that we can also see how each person performed in relation to their target. Now the big question is, how do we build it? The first thing that we want to do is select all of the data including the headers. Then we go to insert and insert a 2D column chart. From here, let's select the chart, click on the plus icon, turn off the grid lines, get rid of the title, and then click on the arrow next to legend, and then select top. We can then click on the plus again to close these options. At this point, let's increase the font size of the legend to 16, and bold it as well. Let's also increase the font size of the vertical axis to 12, and increase the font size of the horizontal axis to 12 too. Next, we will right click on the chart and select change chart type. At the very bottom, we'll select the combo chart option and make sure that the chart type for sales is clustered column and that the chart type for target is line. We can then click on OK. At this point, let's right click on one of the bars and select format data series. In the panel on the right, select the bars icon and change the gap width to 200%. Then click on the paint bucket icon, select solid fill under fill, and make sure that the color is this light blue color right here. And then under border, select the no line option. From here, click on the down arrow next to series options and select target series. Under line, select the no line option, and then click on marker. Expand the marker options, select built in, and change the type to this line icon that you see right here. We can now increase the marker size to 25. Next, under fill, select solid fill, and change the color to this dark blue. And then under border, select the no line option. We can now close the format data series panel on the right. And for the finishing touch, position the chart where you want it to be. And then in the format tab in the ribbon, change the shape outline to none. We are now finished with our first next level chart. For our second chart, the goal is to show the number of views and visitors our website has gotten over the past six months. A great chart to show this data would be a bar within bar chart. We know that the views will always exceed the number of visitors, but we still want to be able to see these two metrics in comparison to one another. We also want to see the views of each month compared as well as the visitor counts. So a bar within bar chart fits this scenario because it shows us all of these metrics at once. So how do we build a bar within bar chart like we see here. To begin, let's first select all of the data, including the headers. Then we go to insert and insert a 2D column chart. From here, let's select the chart and click on the plus icon. We'll turn off the grid lines, get rid of the title, and then click on the arrow next to legend and then select top. We can then click the plus again to close these options. At this point, let's increase the font size of the legend to 16 and bold it as well. 
will increase the font size of the vertical axis to 12, and also increase the font size of the horizontal axis to 12. Next, we will right click on the chart and select Change Chart Type. At the very bottom, select the Combo Chart option, and then make sure that the chart type for the views is clustered column and that the chart type for visitors is also clustered column. We then want to make sure that we check the secondary axis checkbox for the visitors series. Finally, we can click on OK. Now this next part is very important. We will select the vertical axis on the right and then press the delete key on the keyboard to get rid of it. That way, both metrics will be displayed in relation to the vertical axis on the left. At this point, let's right click on one of the blue data bars and then select Format Data Series. In the panel on the right, let's click on the data bars icon and then change the gap width to 75%. Next, let's click on the paint bucket icon and under Fill, select Solid Fill. Let's then select this light blue color right here. Also, under Border, go ahead and select the No Line option. After that, click on the down arrow next to Series Options and select the Visitor Series. Under Fill, select Solid Fill and then select this blue color right here. Then, under Border, select No Line. Let's then go ahead and click on the Bars icon now. And we will change the gap width to 300%. We can now close the Format Data Series panel, and for the final step, we position the chart where we want it to be, and then under the Format tab in the ribbon, we change the shape outline to No Outline. We now have our final chart. Okie dokie, let's move on to our third chart for this video. For this example, we have the ice cream sales numbers for January through December. The goal is to create a line chart to show the change in ice cream sales over time. The appeal of this chart in particular is that we want to add these nice looking bubble markers that make it easy to identify the values for each individual month. So let's see how to create a chart like this. The first thing that we want to do is select all of the data including the headers. Then we go to insert and insert a 2D line chart. From here, let's select the chart and then click on the plus icon and turn off the grid lines. And then we can click the plus again to close the options. At this point, let's increase the font size of the title to 16 and bold it as well. Let's also increase the font size of the vertical axis to 12 and increase the font size of the horizontal axis to 12 too. Now we can make the chart a little wider and from here right click on the data line and select Format Data Series. In the panel on the right click on the paint bucket icon and under Line select Solid Line and then change the color to this blue right here. Also increase the size to 2.5. Next click on Marker and expand the marker options. Select Built In, change the type to Circle, and change the size to 9. Under Fill, select Solid Fill and select the color white. Under Border, select Solid Line and select this blue color right here. And also change the width to 2.25. We can now close out of the Format Data Series panel and for the finishing touch, position the chart where you want it to be and then change the shape outline to no outline. Our ice cream sales line chart is now complete. Let's move on to chart number four. For our fourth chart, we will be building what's called a bullet chart. A bullet chart is designed to display a specific metric in relation to different classifications or stages in which that metric can fall. For example, here we have a customer satisfaction score, and we also have different levels that that customer satisfaction score can fall under. 
If the customer satisfaction score falls between 50 and 70%, for example, then that score is classified as fair. On top of that, a bullet chart can also display a target metric as well. And so the big question is, how do you create a bullet chart in Microsoft Excel? To create a bullet chart in Excel, we need to start by setting up our data properly within our workbook. As you can see here, we have the ranges for our customer satisfaction levels. We also have the target customer satisfaction score and the actual customer satisfaction score as well. Now we need to transform a few of these values first before we can create the bullet chart. For the actual and target values, these will remain the same. However, the values for the different levels will need to change. Starting with the lowest level, we simply enter the top end of the threshold. Then, for the next level up, we want the value to be the difference between the top end of this level and the top end of the previous level. For example, the first level ends at 25% and the second level ends at 50%. So we take 50 minus 25, which gives us 25, and that is the value that we use for the second level. Getting the value for the next level after that works the same way. We take the top end, 70%, and subtract the top end of the previous level, which is 50%, and we end up with a final value of 20%. We repeat this process for all of the remaining levels. So for the next level, we subtract 70 from 90 to get 20%, and for the last level, we subtract 90 from 100 to get 10%. And it is finally at this point that we can begin creating our bullet chart. So we go ahead and select all of the labels, and then we hold the control key to select all of the chart values. From here, we go to insert and then select the stacked column 2D chart. Next, click on the switch row column button under the Chart Design tab in the ribbon. We then right-click on the chart and select Change Chart Type. We'll select the Combo option at the bottom, and then we will change the chart type for every series except the Target Series to Stacked Column. After that, we change the chart type for the Target Series to Stacked Line with Markers. Finally, select the secondary axis option for the target and actual series, and then click on OK. From here, we select the axis on the right and press the delete key on our keyboard. Next, let's change the chart title to customer satisfaction, and then let's increase the font size to 16 and bold it as well. Let's also increase the font size of the vertical axis to 12. Next, we will select the chart and click on the plus icon. Let's click on the arrow next to axis and remove the horizontal axis. And we also want to turn off the grid lines and add a legend on the right. At this point, right click on the big dark blue bar and select format data series. In the panel on the right, Click the down arrow next to the series options and make sure that the actual series is selected. Then click on the bars icon and change the gap width to 400%. Go ahead and click on the paint bucket icon next and under fill, select solid fill and select this light blue fill color right here. Then under border, select no line. We then click on the down arrow next to the series options and change the series to the target series. After that, click on the paint bucket icon and under line, select no line. Then under marker, expand the marker options, select built in and change the marker to the line option and also increase the size to 40. Then under fill, Select Solid Fill and change the color to black. Then under Border, select No Line. From here, 
Click on the down arrow next to Series Options and select the Very Bad Series. Click on the Paint Bucket icon and under Fill, select Solid Fill and change the color to this dark gray. And under Border, select No Line. Next, click on the down arrow next to Series Options and select the Pore Series. Click on the Paint Bucket icon and under Fill, select Solid Fill and change the color to this gray color here. And under Border, select No Line. Then we click on the down arrow next to the Series Options and select the Fair Series. We click on the Paint Bucket icon and under Fill, select Solid Fill and change the color to this gray right here. And under Border, we select No Line. Then click on the down arrow next to the Series Options and select the Very Good Series. Click on the Paint Bucket icon and under Fill, select Solid Fill and change the color to this gray right here. And under Border, select No Line. And then we click on the down arrow next to the Series Options again and select the Excellent Series. Then we click on the Paint Bucket icon and under Fill, select Solid Fill and change the color to this light gray color here. And under Border, we select No Line. And finally, we click on the down arrow next to the Series Options one more time and select the Vertical Axis option. Then we click on the Bars icon and change the Maximum to 1. We can now finally close out of the panel on the right. Coming back to the chart, let's increase the font size of the legend to 14. And let's also resize the chart by reducing the width a little bit like so. Then we can click on the Format tab in the ribbon and remove the shape outline. The bullet chart is now complete. Let's move on to our final chart for the video. Here we have all 50 states and the goal is to create a geographical heat map that shows the median household income for each state. The good news is that of all the charts we've created so far, this one is probably the easiest one to create. To create a geographical heat map like this, the first thing that we need is the median household income data to power the chart. Luckily for us, Excel makes it really easy to pull this kind of data. The first thing that we need to do is select all 50 states, and then we click on the data tab in the ribbon, and under the data type group of commands, select the geography option. This turns our listed states into special geography data values. And after that, with all 50 states still selected, click on the Insert Data button you see here and select the Median Household Income. Excel then inserts the data for us automatically. At this point, we are ready to create the chart. Let's select all of the data, including the headers, and then go to Insert, Maps, Filled Maps. After that, let's select the chart and click on the plus icon. Let's get rid of the chart title and then move the legend to the top. Next, let's click on the plus icon again to close these options and then we will increase the font size of the legend to 14. We can now resize the chart to our liking and then click on the format tab in the ribbon and remove the shape outline. Our geography heat map is now complete. And that officially wraps up this video on how to create five next level effective charts in Microsoft Excel. I hope you had a blast learning how to build these five charts in Microsoft Excel. By the way, did you find a chart that might be useful in your line of work? Leave me a comment below and let me know. Also, if you got some value out of this video, I really encourage you to like and subscribe. That being said, until next time, I will see you in the next Spreadsheet Life video.